everyone, Kevin here once again with my one two three cents. And for those of you who read my blog, my one two three cents.blogspot.com, you know that I'm a big fan of the Miz. In fact, it was about a year ago that I actually got to meet the Miz and do an interview with him for the TV station that I work for. And that meeting went so well that he actually inspired me to get a faux hawk of my own. Now I'm pushing 40 and wearing a haircut like this, so a lot of times I think I'm probably look ridiculous with it but I really don't care the Miz has it he's awesome and I think it looks pretty awesome too but anyway I uh, got to talk to the Miz last year uh, for about 10 minutes did the interview the pre-interview and the post interview things too um, probably about a 20 or 30 minute gathering with him it was really cool uh, and that interview kind of changed my perspective of him as a person now I had liked him as a superstar before but uh, seeing him as a person too kind of shed some light on the character and who he is today. So take a look. People always ask, what can you expect? Expect the unexpected. And it's going to be a live wrestling show, but also there's going to be comedy acts. Um, I mean, not comedy acts, but like, you know, people, there's going to be some fun. You know, we always tell the crowd, you can always interact. You boo who you hate, cheer who you want, you know, have fun with it. You know, it's a fun family filled adventure. And you say boo who you hate, and you're kind of one of those guys now that people love to hate. Yeah, I'm one of those guys that people love to hate. And the thing is, when I come out, I don't mind if you boo me. It's okay. You know, it's fine. I just use that as, um, as something to ignite my fire, to beat up the guy that you are cheering. And who are you facing tonight? Uh, so that actually, I don't know who I'm facing, but it's some unlucky soul, and it'll probably be for the United States Championship, and uh, they will probably lose. So, there you go. And now tell me about, because a lot of folks know you, I've mentioned that I'm going to be talking to the Miz today, and they remember you from the real world. How did that transition go for you, going from one show to this, and you know your, your role on Tough Enough, and kind of being the success story of that whole program, because... You're kind of the last man standing with that. Talk a little bit about that, and was there any pressure involved with that? Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Um, yeah, I, it's funny. Even to this day, I haven't been on a reality show in five years, and people still remember me from the real world, the real world was challenges. And uh, to do that transition, to go from a reality show to the WWE, I was an outsider. And let me tell you something. Nobody liked me. And it wasn't just out there in the audience, it was in the locker room as well. So to make that transition was just brutal. It was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. And the pressure is still on. Each and every day that I am in the WWE, I have to work really hard to basically prove to the fans, prove to the locker room that I am here to stay, I'm a person to be reckoned with, and I demand respect. And the thing is, sometimes people don't respect me. But it's fine because I'm the United States Championship and I proved to everyone that I deserved it when I beat Kofi Kingston for it. So um, it's been a long, long journey. And to go from reality to the WWE has been one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my life. That promo you cut the other night on Raw seemed to be coming from the heart. I'm, I'm guessing it was. You after know, hearing this. It's funny. Everyone has talked to me about that promo I did two Monday nights ago. And it was a true story. I mean, I really did. Um, people were really out to get me, to make me quit, to try to get me fired. People would do whatever they possibly could. I mean, they kicked me out of the locker room. They made my life just terrible. And it was like I would get up every morning and think, man, can I, keep, I have to keep doing this. I have to keep doing this. This is what I want. This is my dream. But people would always shut you down, and every everyone would always tell you, "You're not good enough. You're not going to do anything. You you suck. You're terrible." And it wasn't just out there in the audience; it was out in here in the locker room. And it's imagine, you know, everyone telling you, "You're not good enough. You suck. You're terrible. We hate you. We don't want you here. You're an outsider. You're a reality star. Go back to those reality shows." And having people tell you that, it was just every day, you know, you start almost believing it until one day. You know, you just said, stop, enough. You know, you are good enough. You're better than everything. Everyone tells you you are. So I just kind of used my motivation, my confidence. My friends really helped me out through it, too, that weren't in the business. 
You know, they were like, dude, you're doing what you always dreamed of doing. This is your dream. No one ever said it was going to be easy to get the dream that you wanted to get. And so, yeah, that's kind of where it stood off. I mean, that was a real life, life promo that I kind of like, uh, that I wanted to really say. And they were like, you want to say that? I was like, yes. They're like, okay. Teaming with Morrison and winning the tag team titles now being the U.S. champion, do you feel some validation now? That Do they still view you as an outsider, do you think? I think I'll always be viewed as an outsider. And now I've kind of come to terms with that and kind of embraced it and said, you know what, I want to be an outsider. I don't want to be one of those guys that are a professional wrestler. You know, I didn't want to be one of those guys wearing Zumba pants and a, and a wife beater shirt with a fanny pack on. I wanted to be a new type of style of wrestling. I wanted to be a person that people can look up to and be like, you know what, that guy's a star. You know, he, he isn't one of those guys because he's the star out of everybody. And so being the outcast in WWE, I embrace it now. I would imagine, too, life on the road uh, never gets easier. You're in a different city almost every day. Talk a little bit about the, the grind of being on the road. I mean, just talk about today. Uh, this last night, or this morning at 1 a.m., I flew from L.A. to St. Louis, got here with no sleep, um, drove to Cape, and uh, now I'm here doing interviews all day until the show starts. So basically, I'm going off with no sleep, and then tonight we drive to another city that I don't even know what city I'm going to tomorrow. I really don't. I'll find out by somebody, you know, oh, we're going here. Oh, okay. And then I know we go to Champaign, uh, Illinois on Sunday, and then Monday we're in Columbus, Ohio. Then I'm back in L.A. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's an ongoing just traveling. I don't know where I'm going to be the next week. I don't know where I'm going to be next week. You know, I just keep on going. I know Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday I'm going to be home. I'm really happy about sleeping in my bed, you know? I only get three days a week, sometimes not even that. Sometimes I'm not even home at all. But uh, it's a fun, it's fun, you know? It's not every day you get to perform in front of thousands of people and uh, have them either booing you or cheering you, but the fact is they're there to see you. So we're there to put on a show. What's been the highlight so far for you as a WWE superstar? I have tons of highlights, I'm The Miz. But uh, if I had to choose one, it would definitely be winning the United States Championship because it's a singles title. People always say, you know, Miz and Morrison, Morrison was the talent. I'd always hear that. And so winning my first singles title and showing people that, hey, I was the talent of that tag team. I was the reason we did so well. It's nice. It's validating. All right. Anything else you'd like to add? Um, just for the people in Cape, just always remember this. I'm The Miz, and I'm awesome. Indeed, he is awesome, and I do hope that The Miz holds on to the WWE Championship at the Royal Rumble against Randy Orton and goes on to defend it at WrestleMania. I'll be there once again this year, and I'll bring you reports from the road as well. With my one, two, three cents, I'm Kevin Huntsberger.